Hey guys, did you know that China has earned the nickname Infrastructure Maniac? This nickname is not derogatory. It reflects foreigners' astonishment at the speed of China's development. In today's video, we will bring you mighty Chinese construction technology whose engineering shocks America's engineers to the bone. But before we dive in, we kindly ask you to show your support by liking this video and subscribing to Machine Eye. We value your thoughts and invite you to share your opinions on these remarkable construction technologies in the comments below. Without further ado, let's embark on an extraordinary journey. In a speech, Professor Ellison from Harvard University commented on the speed of China's development, saying, everything is progressing so quickly that we don't even have time to be amazed. China has actually soared. It's meteoric. All this has happened so fast, we haven't yet had time to be astonished. To illustrate his point, Professor Ellison gave an example. In the state of Massachusetts, USA, there was a bridge that underwent repairs starting in 2012 with an estimated duration of two years. Well, guess what? Professor Ellison said. In 2014, they said it wasn't finished. Uh, in 2015, they said it would take one more year. In 2015, they said it's not finished. We're not going to tell you when it's going to be finished. <laughs> Finally, last year it was finished three times over budget. On the other hand, there is a bridge in Beijing, China called the San Yuan Bridge which is several times larger than the American bridge. In 2015, the Chinese decided to renovate it. Professor Ellison asked, How long did it take for them to complete the project? 2015. What do you bet? Take a guess. Okay, Take a look. The answer is 43 hours. Now, of course, that couldn't happen in New York. Yes. Yup, you heard that right. Just 43 hours. Of course, such a thing would never happen in New York. It's downright impossible. These words perfectly sum up China's infrastructure mania. There is also a young man named Luo Jingyang. He visited Dalian, China in 2013 as a tourist. And when he returned in 2015, he was in for a shock. There stood a sea-crossing bridge that hadn't existed before. He exclaimed, Wow, this is China's speed. But my friends, that's just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to China's infrastructure prowess. Fast forward to 2018, and China's showcasing its strength once again. Due to conflicts with a newly constructed route, the Longyan Railway Station in Fujian Province had to be demolished. After extensive discussions, experts decided to directly move the entire station. The plan was quickly finalized, and construction began. To avoid disrupting normal traffic the following day, the project was carried out at night with 1,500 workers and countless construction machines. China completed a whopping 1.5-kilometer-long infrastructure project in less than nine hours. When foreign media caught wind of this, it caused quite a stir. We're hearing these complaints about our transport structure. On substandard train services. Just wondering, for the sake of argument, how the Chinese do these things. They were able to build a whole new station in the space of nine hours by flooding it thousands of workers. We should be much more imaginative about getting infrastructure in instead of condemning people to being isolated in remote areas. Was it nine hours they built? Nine hours. Sounds Look like it a up. A, there, show. there is a video here. You've got to watch it. We can't, we can't watch get the word out. Many people found it hard to believe that China could achieve such a feat. So, just how strong is China's infrastructure capability? Let's dive into some examples. China is the only country in the world that provides electricity to every household among its 1.4 billion population. It has the largest coverage of power grids in the world, 
with 9.96 million communication base stations, ranking first globally. China also has over 1 million highway and railway bridges, ranking first in the world. Its high-speed rail network spans a total of 31,000 kilometers, ranking first globally, while its expressway network covers 131,000 kilometers, also ranking first in the world. It's worth mentioning that China's first expressway, the Shenyang Dalian Expressway, was officially opened in 1988. Can you believe that within just over 30 years, China went from zero to becoming the global leader? It's like they hit the fast-forward button on development. Here's a fun fact. China consumed as much cement in three years as the United States did in nearly a century. That's how rapid changes have become the norm in China. However, if we want to talk about China's ability as an infrastructure maniac, we have to thank the United States for teaching China a valuable lesson. Back in the early days of China's founding, infrastructure wasn't exactly a top priority. After all, they had just emerged from a century of humiliation and were focused on overcoming poverty and weakness, making sure people had enough to eat. Meanwhile, the United States was flexing its infrastructure muscles with 400,000 kilometers of railways, 124,000 kilometers of highways, and engineering marvels like the Empire State Building and the Hoover Dam. In 1950, the U.S. produced a staggering 87.85 million tons of steel, while China managed only 610,000 tons. But then, China's predecessors in the Volunteer Army faced off against the mighty United States. Picture this, during the Battle of Chosen Reservoir on December 5, 1950, the U.S. 1st Marine Division was on the run, desperately trying to escape. The Xuemen Bridge in Guduri was a crucial escape route, but guess what? The Chinese Volunteer Army had already blown it up. And every time the U.S. military engineers repaired the bridge, the Chinese soldiers would destroy it again. It was a battle of wills. But the U.S., with its powerful industrial capacity, managed to transport eight sets of 8.8 .8 tons of bridges from Japan within two days. And just like that, they swiftly constructed a massive all-steel 50-ton bridge. And then they swiftly withdrew. That scene left an indelible mark on our predecessors in the Volunteer Army. Since then, China realized that it must become stronger, or else it would be subjected to aggression. In 1953, with the end of the Korean War, China officially embarked on its first five-year plan. From that moment on, China put in all its effort to catch up with the United States. If there was no money, they would eat one less meal. If there was no technology, they study hard and try their best to change. If there were no machines, the hands of Chinese workers became excavators, and their shoulders became cranes. In 1958, construction officially began on the Qinghai Tibet Railway, the world's highest altitude and longest railway on a plateau. It traversed the Tangula Mountains, reaching a maximum elevation of 5,072 meters. Most of the route was located in a zone of extreme conditions, spanning 550 kilometers of frozen soil. Once the frozen soil thawed, the roadbed would undoubtedly be damaged. To solve this problem, Chinese scientists employed methods such as building bridges to support the road, ventilating the roadbed, and using insulation panels. However, compared to frozen soil, the lack of oxygen, low temperatures, and ultraviolet radiation posed even greater challenges. For this purpose, China invested nearly 200 million yuan and established 115 medical support points along the railway, with over 600 resident medical personnel. Through their tireless efforts, since the start of the Qinghai Tibet Railway, they have treated a total of 453,000 patients without a single death. This miraculous sky road took 26 years to complete and open for operation, opening up the previously isolated Qinghai Tibet Plateau. It stands as a significant milestone in China's history of infrastructure development. After 70 years of storms and transformations, China has grown into a soaring dragon, and its infrastructure strength has reached an incredible level. One of the most astonishing examples is the construction of the Huashenshin and Leishenshin hospitals. In 2020, when the COVID-19 pandemic broke out, 
China needed a dedicated hospital to tackle the outbreak head-on, and boy, did they deliver. The Wuhan Yuashenshin Hospital was built in just 10 days, from January 23rd to the morning of February 2nd. That's right, 10 days. And as if that wasn't jaw-dropping enough, three days later, they completed the Leishenshin Hospital in another 10-day sprint. These incredible feats made headlines worldwide, and rightly so. This was a miracle, and it was the Chinese workers who made this miracle happen. China has the world's most dedicated laborers, the labor force is nothing short of extraordinary. Those ordinary workers have achieved countless world records that left Americans scratching their heads in disbelief. They represent the cohesion of China and embody the national spirit. They are equally deserving of remembrance and praise. This is the only explanation for why China is called the infrastructure maniac. Have you gained a better understanding of China's amazing engineering and construction technology? We would love to hear your thoughts and insights in the comment section below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to stay updated with more fascinating content. Thank you for watching and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and bye.